Super mission. I don't know, to wait for you or to wait for this. I don't know. <laughs> Just teach me. How will teach you? With your permission, with Sam's permission. Shabbat is Parashat Ruma. Almost always, this parasha appears just before Purim. Shabbat before Parashat Zachor. Okay, Shabbat Parashat Zachor. Parashat Ruma. Excuse me. It's the way the Gemara tells us while Moshe was in Shamaim, Hashem told him that parasha. He talks about building a Mishkan. As the Zohar says, the Torah is not a history. Nevertheless, the Torah is going to tell us in detail how to build a Mishkan. And this is a temporary thing. Certain vessels, certain things are going to be used in Metamigdash. But all the wood around, and the sides, and all the curtains, and the cover, the ceiling, it was, it was temporary. And they're in the desert. All the special halachot were in the desert. Nevertheless, the Torah is going to be busy with it. Not only busy with it. The amazing thing after this Parashat Ruma and Parashat Hatzaveh, We'll talk about the Mishkan and the clothing of the Kohen and Gadol and setting up. And Torah is going to repeat the whole thing again. Parashat Vayakir Pudel, two parashiyot, almost, almost identical, almost identical. Some kind of changes that really hint certain things. But it's really not necessary. Not say the first time, but a repetition. After Moshe told them Israel, he came down and told them Israel, well, I am upstairs in Shamayim, Parashat Tumayim, Parashat Tzameh, and Hashem told me, and then I'm going to tell it to you, and then you're going to do it, and the Torah repeats it. And I said, what's the purpose of it? Why Torah has said it? The Torah could have said, and I'm Israel made whatever Moshe was told in Shamayim and did it. Again, there are some minor changes that maybe this, this, this is the reason, but we're not going to go to it tonight. And then comes the Torah with the descriptions that Moshe comes down and he's, he's, he's going to come down, he's going to tell us all about give Truma to build, to build the Mishkan. And it's a Mahlokar among the Chachamim that, that, that Parashat Truma was said to Moshe Rabbeinu while he was in Shamayim the first time, maybe it's just the second time after he did the Golden Kef for the Shalom. But everybody almost agreed that the Mishkan is a kapara on the golden calf. Even though it is before the golden calf, but it means Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu because Hashem predicts that something is going to go wrong, as well as the last week parasha, the Torah tells us that Hashem told Moshe in Shamayim already, I'm not going to go with them, I'm going to send an angel. And the Gemara says, what are you talking about? Well, what are you going to say, angel? Well, shalom. And the Gemara says, well, Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, listen, they're going to do something bad. It means Hashem predicted, Hashem told to Moshe in Mitzrayim, the Gemara says, that Hashem had Moshe the first time last year in Egypt. He told him, Oh, I eat it. He says, I'm, You don't see, but I see already the golden calf. There's a major, major scene of the golden calf, of course. How bad this golden calf is. The Gemara says like this This golden calf was never forgiven. Even though it says in the Torah that Moshe came and, and did everything, and then never come to Gemara and tell us a statement like this. Any difficulty that a person has in his lifetime, doesn't matter what it is, in business, in life, in health, anything. Excuse me. <coughs> no, it wasn't sneezing, it just caught me. But it's okay, you don't have to take it over. I mean, come on. Ma says anything that happens to a person, doesn't matter what it is. Flat tire. You lost your pencil. You bought something and it's broken, it's not good, and you have to go back to the store. Anything that's not 100%, some percentage, I don't know how much, is because of Golden Calf. Golden Calf is here in every second of our life. 
because that sin was never forgiven to us. It's very, very strange thing. It's a very strange thing. How much? Forever. 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 Did you shuba? Did you shuba? Did you shuba? Yeah. Won't help you. It just won't help you. So why is it going to help me? <coughs> I'm just coughing. No, no. No, 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 no, no. It's very, very strange to be saying. Basha doesn't forgive us this? And Basha says, no. Let me know. What does he mean, no? The worst of it, the Gemara says, well, how did the golden calf start? How did it start? The Gemara says, well, I'm Israel. Moshe told us that he's coming back in 40 days. And Moshe meant 40 days besides the day that I'm going up to Shemaim. Okay? 40 days pass. Moshe did not come. So the Gemara says the Satan showed them like a coffin sailing in Shammai. They looked in the sky. They thought, oh, this is a balloon from China, from, from Russia. What is this? A spy. Said, no, this is Moshe's coffin. He died in, he died in Shammai. And then we went to Aaron. I said, Aaron, Moshe is dead. We saw it in Shammai. Aaron said, no, it's coming tomorrow. He said, listen, we saw this. It's a funeral in Shammai with the angels. He says to him, the whole thing is fiction. The whole thing is a shekel. It's a lie. But how come is the Satan has some kind of power to trick us? Why did Hashem let him do it? Hashem should, should, should erase it. There is the picture. It's a fiction. Like he went to the moon. America never went, never went to the moon. The whole thing is a shekel. I also can make this thing. I can make a video with a flag on a black uh, ball, and I say I speak via uh, walkie-talkie. And sounds from sounds from the moon. They went to the moon. They went to the moon. It's all singing shaker. It's the whole thing with the golden calf is shaker, shaker. Nothing. We waited for our Moshe Rabbeinu. We under house, you know. Everything is perfect. So we 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 thought Moshe is is not coming, but we didn't think Moshe died or something. We don't know what it is. And of a sudden, we saw Moshe Kaufman. So why? So the whole thing is Shekel. Says the Gemara, true. The Gemara, Masot Abed Azor. Forget about it. The whole thing is fiction. But Hashem wanted to show Teshuvah L'Rabim. It means that Hashem is trying to put us in a trap. We should do Teshuvah. Okay, so we did or we didn't? So it's, now it's cash 22. Did we do it? Did we do Shuba? Oh, we didn't do Shuba. So why did Hashem do it? If Hashem did it because Hashem wanted to show there's a concept of Shuba, so it means we did the Shuba. Otherwise, it defeats the, the, the whole purpose. So we did the Shuba. So how come Hashem is, is not forgiving it? How come Hashem said that is sin is going to stay with you forever? Well, I said, well, you should know that this, the episode David the Melech and Bathsheba was the same thing. The whole thing is fiction. Fiction. The Gemara says, David the Melech asked Kadosh Baruch Hu, I want to be part of the chair of Hashem. Hashem said, listen, you can't. So how come I want second Yaakov? The chariot, not the chair, maybe. Hashem said, you know what? I tested them. Well, it says, they test me too. Hashem said, you know what? I test you. I tell you what it is. I'm going to be a test. Chas Shalom in abomination. Then he says, <laughs> One day the Gemara says, The Gemara. But Sheva went to Mikveh. Went to Mikveh. And the Satan came and broke the wall of the Mikveh. And David saw her. That is, she's not dressed properly. And then the whole episode of David the Melech Sheva. Is it fair? Not fair. What do you mean? Why? Who broke the wall? Satan. The same one with the golden calf. He broke the wall. David, you remember it the last time? Mm -hmm. Come on, says, you know why it's true, fiction. Hashem did it 
to show you this concept of tshuva for a singular person, not public. The golden calf is a fiction to show this tshuva for public, and David the Melech episode is also shaker. It's only because the show wants to say, oh, David the Melech is tshuva now for the last twenty, next twenty years, he's going to tani, he's like a drink, he's like yeah, also so. Okay. Did Hashem forgive David? Yeah, Hashem forgive David. He says, David the Melech, he says, Shlomo is going to be the king, and Moshe is going to come David. So I know, Hashem forgive David. Okay, fine. Did Hashem forgive about the uh, golden calf? No. 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 Why did you? Why? Did you tshuva? He did you tshuva. So. I'm saying, well, okay. Now, nah, so how, how bad it is golden calf? Very bad thing. Okay. Now do the mishkan. Do the mishkan. This one says, this one says, no, this is forgiveness for, for the golden calf. That's for the golden calf. What relationship has to do with, with doing the golden calf with me doing the mishkan? Well, it's like somebody's going to give donation to a shul. In the meantime, he comes out of the shul, he's doing a sin. I did the sin, made a golden calf. I bow down to the golden calf. I sacrifice the golden calf. I kiss the golden calf. I dance with the golden calf. You know what? Do a mishkan. No mishkan can do anything. He never does all. He never does a mishkan. The whole thing is shaker. You know, sometimes we have to pick ourselves out, you know, from the shoes that we learn in school. Chumash. My sister is wrong, I was very upset about it, you know, that people learn the Chumash, the way they learn it in school. My brother is very upset, Shumar is very upset. He had to start learning, he said, Torah, the Chumash, many speak about the Chumash. It's very, very different, you have to set your head different. The whole Torah is like this, not just the Chumash. Yeah. And we have Purim, the story of Purim. So come the Gemara and says, Rabbi Shumba Yochai stood, ask Rabbi Shumba Yochai, what is the reason that all of a sudden Haman had this power? Excuse me, this is Satan. To convince the Kadosh Baruch Hu to get rid of all of Israel. What happened? The passage is like Holocaust, Holocaust. All of Israel and Hashem agreed. It's unbelievable. Hashem told us, Satan, okay, give me, go get me a, a parchment, something like this. I'm going to write, finish, I'm going to sign it. And Hashem did sign it. But the Gemara says, Hashem did not sign it with blood. Hashem signed it just with the clay. The stamp of Hashem. Can you imagine Hashem already stamped? In Shemaim, Hashem stamped already a, a, a note. Forget about Am Yisrael. So, so how bad it was, the Gemara says. The Yom Nabi went to Ramat Sakhim Yaakov and told him about the decree. And the Gemara says, Ramat Sakhim Yaakov asked the Nabi, what happened? And the Nabi said, but every Rabbi Shumar is going to tell his students. They went to Ahasuerus party. Ahasuerus party, Ramat Sakhim Yaakov said, finish, okay, forget about it, you can't do nothing. Then he had to run to Moshe Rabbeinu. I told him, you the Raya Memna, you the trusted shepherd, please, 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 please. And the other said, okay, I'll try. So Moshe said, listen, is anybody downstairs that can pray together with me? I'll pray upstairs, and they shall pray downstairs. So the other said, yeah, it's only one Mordechai, Mordechai. Mordechai? I don't know Mordechai, it's not true. At the time of war, the three, one of the three major Nevi'im that we had, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, major, major ones, they were alive. They will be alive in Betamigdash. They will come to, they're going to show us exactly Betamigdash, what to do. And there are 220 giant, one Sheikh Nesak Dola at the time, major, major people. So Moshe asked, you know, is there anybody downstairs? You know, Moshe says, yeah. You know what? This is the biggest bedin we ever had. The major, major bedin in Gemara says nobody can go after that. And then he said, this one guy in says, Mordechai. Mordechai. No, no. With all the respect to Mordechai, there's nothing. There's nothing. We have to chachamim, rabbanim, nevi'im. So Moshe said to Levi, I'll pray here, let Mordechai pray down there. Let's see if we can cancel it. How can we cancel it? Hashem already wrote it down. I can cancel it. The Nabi told Moshe Rabbeinu, well, because Hashem did not sign it with blood, so called blood, but um, is a chance, it's just 
Even the Hashanah party, this is what Hashanah was very upset. I said, well, what happened? What, what happened in the party? What happened in the party? And I'm in the party, was kosher food. Oh, you blood. The wine from Israel, Oregonus, Amara, the best wine. <laughs> Stamp. Molechai was the supervisor of the Kashrut. No trick. Nothing. Everything was 100%. Okay. He came inside. And Mordechai uh, said, don't go inside. But we didn't know that. Okay. Mordechai is fanatic. That's, uh, that's, that's not the reason. The man says, well, 18,500 did not behave so well. There's some goyot over there, maybe. Uh, okay. 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 With all the respect. All the respect. So what? So what? I shouldn't decide. All I'm inside because of that. Those people went and committed the sin, and did commit the sin, so they should get punished. But the whole all around the world, they'll get notices. Next year, you'd give me a down, everybody kill all the Jewish people, take all the fortune, finish. And Hashem agreed with that. By the way, the same question is on the Holocaust. One million children in Machshom Hitler killed. Big giant Rabbanim died. Ain't a guy. So, so, well, what, what's the problem exactly? I'm not here to predict what happened, why the Holocaust was. From what you said, this is the Shamot of the acquisition of the, uh, the, the, the Jews that he did not want to come outside and say, I made to that for sure. But still, it's a little question. Rabbanim said, Yaakov will say, forget about it. And that's exactly what uh, the, children, the student of Shumar Chai asked him. What's behind it with the rest of the world? He said, you know what? Something else? Not something else. The Mach and Mokhaden so made the Statue of Liberty. It was not over the Zohar. You know, the man was this, 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 this uh, low life, so white trash, uh, all the bad things in the world. You read the Gemara, forget about it, it's the Zohar. The, the, when the Gemara talks about this animal, it's Shlom HaMelech's son. From Bacheva, from Makar uh, Shiva, Shlomo Melech, Al Mukhadnez, the horse, the masses they came to the Hemtik, they put his Shama in Gehenom, all the Hashem in Gehenom, ask Al Hope, please take him out from Gehenom. He saw me. So he made a statue, very high, so I just tall statue, and he ordered everybody to bow down to the statue. That's just what said it was not the Zohar. So it says, Statue of Liberty. Yeah, yeah. So he wants to show that he's the king of the world, he's to ride on a lion and the scarf for the snake. That's the major guy. So Shumachai said, that you see, they bow down to the statue. But that's the statue. For this, you kill all the Jews around the world because they bow down to, to the statue. Can you imagine those days? They knew all around the world who bowed down. The Machshmon Bukhadeza had spied all over, Shabak, all over the world. He couldn't hide. And this is three people did not bow down. Hanania, Mishal, Bazaria, three Jews. All the rest on the floor. Okay, big deal. So, on the floor, okay, okay. Okay, Yaakov also was on the floor in front of Reza. I said, that is Holocaust. Machshmon Bukhadeza said, yeah, that's Holocaust. Very strange thing. So here comes Haman. I'm going to tell you here, Mordechai was in Shushan, and um, Hasbiro said everybody should bow down to Haman, and Mordechai doesn't bow down to Haman. Am Israel did blame Mordechai when the execution notices came out. They all told Mordechai, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Why did you do it? I don't understand you. Why do you have to start out with that? You don't want to bow down to him? Go hide in your house. Why you have to sit on the street? Every time Haman passed by, purposely he sat down. He was standing up, he sat down. Stand, erect, sit down, erect, and looked in his face. He said, why did you stop him? I'm sorry, major, major complaints that the Gemara says. He said, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Why did you do it? And maybe not allowed to do such a thing. This is Allah that you have to give your life. But that's Allah, yeah. If they force you, not voluntarily, 
you go make a demonstration with all these uh, lefties. But what, what, why are you doing this? Stay away. Back and forth, back and forth. One night, Achashorosh cannot fall asleep. He did fall asleep, he wakes up, he has a bad dream. He says, bring the, bring the, the angel came to him and he told him, listen, someone did a favor to you, you didn't pay him, he might, he might, he might get killed. I says, he wakes up, he, he calls the people, he says, servants, bring the diary, he found out Mordechai did something to the king, he saved his life because two servants wanted to poison him, to kill him. Haman comes inside, he goes, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. Haman comes uh, to, to, to the yard because he wants, he wants to hang Mordechai on the tree. Happened to me at that time, Achashverosh listened to the diary, and he asked, who is here? He says, the prime minister. The prime minister, your assistant, how many is here? Okay, okay. So I asked him, and tell me what, uh, how should I honor the person that, that, that I, I, I owe him a favor? So Haman said, put him on the horse of the king and, and let him wear the king's clothing and everything will be okay. Okay. Haman goes to Mordechai. The way the Gemara describes it, Mordechai is afraid that Haman comes to, to kill him and do something to him. I said, forget about it. No. I'm here to dress you, put you on the horse. By the way, I'm going to ask him, uh, what do you do now? So Mordechai at the time taught 22,000 children. And I'm going to say, what do, you, what do you do now? And I said, I teach them Torah. I said, what subject? And I said, I, I teach them about Omer. Omer. About Omer? I said, what Omer? I said, today is the uh, day after so-called Leila Seda should have been. 16th day, the 16th day of Nisan. And when the Mikdash was on, was Omer. The Gemara says, Haman said, you know what? That Omer defeated me. See, I'm here, I know I'm here. You know why I'm here? Because while you were teaching them about the Omer, I happened to be at the palace. It was two o'clock in the morning. I came and asked Yachashver something. And he told me, go on the Mordechai. Must be the Omer did the job. Come with me. He took him to the mikveh. He gave him a haircut, put him on the horse. And then the whole downfall in one day. The next morning, Haman is on, on the tree finished. The episode of Purim is over, finished. Now you have Purim. Hak Sameach. Purim stay forever, forever. He can stay forever. Purim is forever. What's so great about this? Nothing. What, what's, so great? what's the secret behind this? Tam the Gemara says, I want to tell you something. You know, the day after Pesach is Omer. You know, everybody says, here's the word Omer. It's already a scary thing you should know. Ari and Zohar. And it says, And it says, Hashem checks the five of people on Omer. Very dangerous days. Very big tragedies happen in the Omer. Ah, don't get married in the time of the Omer. Eh, forget, don't shave. Everything. Forget about it. No music. Keep yourself on a low uh, profile. Omer, 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 Omer. Don't spirit a Omer. What's spirit a Omer? What's spirit a Omer? What's Omer? Tell me what it is. I tell you what it is. Tell me is that special? And it says, you know, it's a very special thing. It's a special thing that they, after Lela uh, said there, they come to Bet Hamikdash and they take barley, and they ground the barley and they come to bring it on the altar. It's called Omer. Okay. What? I still I don't get it. What? What is it? Omer? No, 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 no. no. By the way, the Gemara says, you know, Omer is from Bali. As in Bet Amidash, almost never Bali was allowed to be brought to Bet Amidash. Bali is for animals. And Bali kills a person. If somebody, Bedin used to kill a person, but give him, not giving him food a few days, and then you give him Bali. The Bali, he swallows the Bali, his stomach blasts, and he dies. Bali is very not healthy, very not good. And people don't eat it. So they have to pass it to bring it? Why do it? I said, I'll tell you why. Tell you why. It's a Zohar, the Gemara. You see, there is a concept. It's called Sota. Soon we're going to start uh, Sota. What happened is, a husband tells his wife, listen, I don't want you to speak to this stranger, to this man. Don't speak to him. I don't want you to go to him. I don't talk to him. 
And she went and she talked to him and, 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 and they went someplace, you know, and she didn't do the scene. No. So the husband has the right to bring her to the Kohen, but I'm English. And, and they give her, they're gonna give her some water to drink, mixed with some lettuce of Hashem. And this is a test if you pure or maybe you did a scene with this gentleman. What right you have to, to just suspect me? What does it mean exactly? I don't have to listen to you. To tell me not to talk to, to somebody. What kind of business is this? Business is America. It's America. This is not Iran. In Iran you do such a thing. In Israel, democracy. Americans friend. What, can, what does it mean? I want to tell you something. You want to know if your wife is kosher or not? Amara says, she has to listen whatever you say. As a honey, you're going for Pesach to Yerushalayim. No, I'm not going. I'm going, you should know. Or oh, you will take the hechsha off your wife. She's not kosher. The wife is not allowed to argue with the husband about anything. She argues with the husband, she is not kosher. Not if she argues what he said. Even if he, she just does something the husband does not, doesn't want it to happen. The lady has to do the husband's will, not the husband's demand of command. And if she doesn't, look sure, look sure. So if her husband tells her, listen, I don't want to talk to the stranger, stranger you can, she can tell you, what is this, Iran? No. If you know if you know that your husband doesn't like this kind of food and you do this food for supper, you're not kosher. The husband's obligation to the wife, the Gemara says, oh, gufo, respect your wife more than respect yourself. You buy yourself a Lexus, buy your wife more Oh, gufo. You should love your wife the same way you love yourself. Don't do anything that you don't like to be to be done to you, don't do to your wife. But the wife's obligation is is he shak Therefore the Gemara said he should know the lady he did not listen to her husband. She didn't she didn't commit no sin. She just didn't follow her husband's request. Come to come to the Mingdosh and they have to bring a special sacrifice from Bali. Bali. Never between this Bali. Only Omer. Why? Bali is usually giving to animals. You an animal. I'm an animal. I'm an animal. If you don't listen to your husband, you're an animal. Are you an animal? Not true. I don't take it to him. Even you tell me. Listen, let me explain to you something. A golden calf, the same story. Bali. They have to pay some Bali. You know why? I tell you. Because to us, it's the Gemara. We, so called, didn't see Mashiach the first day of Pesach. They are said they're perfect. Like Mr. Berkowitz said, $70 matzah. matzah. Yeah. Buy $70 matzah, clean the house, everything. But waiting for the shofar on Hatzot or midnight of Pesach, she didn't come. Okay, you come, you come, so you come. You know what didn't come? Then the next morning, but having just taken and do Bali. Omer started. Started, starts Svirat Omer. Major, major problems coming up. Svirat Omer, Yemea, Din Berach, Amin says Dari. Again, Hashem is going to check, check me, you file. Hashem is going to check my file on Elul, I said, Again, again, you, you are in front of the judge, in front of Hashem. That's what it is. Mashiach didn't come. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Bali. Bali what? Remember Bali with the, with the lady? You are something. You are like the lady. I'm like the lady? What do you mean I'm like the lady? I didn't do nothing. No. See, the lady brings, brings Bali. You're going to bring Bali. Public Bali. This is called private Bali. The lady. And you, you know what? You know what the common thing between you two? I'll tell you one thing. It means no respect. Hashem created this world on the second day of creation. Hashem created an angel, interior minister, from Matat. 
When he created him, he said one thing. The sentence that we say after Baruch Shama, Yechvod Hashem Olam, Smach Hashem Mazal. We say in Elif Shacharit, Baruch Elokeinu Shibaranu Nechvodo. If you can know what is your obligation, why did Hashem create you? Lichvodo for his respect. That's your job, nothing else. Because you have to say the Kiddush Hashem, and everybody should, because of you, should be Kavod Hashem. Abu Hashem, Kavod. He's more of David. Abu Hashem, Nelly. Abu Hashem, Kavod Hashem. No Kavod Elokeinu. Abu Hashem, Hashem Ahuzo. Sayer Gavato. Your job on this world is only to give Kavod respect. The respect that you give to people, the respect that you give your wife, the respect that you give everything. It's perfect, perfect. You do the job. You don't do the job. It's not a punishment. Just Hashem revokes. Your passport is not valid. You're an American citizen. Government revoked your passport. Come to the airport, they can't, they can't leave the country. So why do they do? I think you don't respect the government. Why do they do? No respect for them. Lady doesn't respect her husband. If her husband asks her, please don't go talk to the stranger. Bali. We did the golden calf. That sin was never forgiven. Why? Because the golden calf is not a sin. What does Shanim say? Hashem left it somewhere. He came out of Egypt a few weeks ago. Yeah, a year ago. Then we did the golden calf. And the golden calf, we said, this is, he took us out of Egypt. Are you, are you for real? We have to see a doctor. We get money every day. You have the wealth of Miriam here. Moshe split the answer for you. Let's take the Makot. He said, I don't just made this. Said, okay, it's Sabbath Azara. Okay, fine. It's okay, fine. You can say, I love Sabbath Azara. You go to China. You have a statue. You say, I love it. Okay. But you can't say, this statue, he took me out of Egypt. It's nonsense. So what's the, what's the problem? What's the problem? And the Gemara says, Hashem doesn't believe in it. And the Gemara says, we are responsible for the Avodah of the world because we said this is God. We said this is God. This is God's God Sheker. I don't know why we said it. The Gemara says, I tell you what it is. That sin of the Golden Cap was never forgiven. You know why? Because it's not a sin. It's disrespect. That's the problem. It's disrespect to Akadosh Baruch How did you do such a thing? You want to say, this time I want to change God. Okay, change God. You know, see, this is not, I mean, certain things I don't know, maybe God, they got, forgot about this. I said, okay, 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 okay. But you can embarrass Hashem. Intellectual person, person. How did you say this God? I said the same thing with the lady. You married to your husband, he asked you, please don't go talk to that man, to a stranger, you go talk to that man. Same thing. The same body. Because our job in this world, you have to know. You have to, to be presentable and you have to act as presentable. You know, with, with the permission of everybody, I don't, I'm, no, I'm nobody. Not I'm humble, I'm just nobody. I don't dare what I say. But I caught you. 400 years ago was the first Hitler. His name was Khamilevsky. He was in Poland, and one day he came, and he killed millions of Jews, ladies, and children, babies, the same like the Nazi, but he was in Poland. His name was Hamilevsky Arsha, Arsha, Arsha. They wrote Tafret, 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 Tafret. Almost 400 years, a little bit less 400. So he's a guy, his name, Abiyotov Dikman, he wrote, Ali Mishnayot, Tosfot Yom Tov. It's amazing, he said, that the that, that Holocaust was in Europe, didn't hit the, 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 the east side all the Svaradim. What happened? At the time, was, uh, Poland was the major, the major country. He said, I'll tell you why. He writes in his book, 200, 200 years ago. Because the Jews in Europe had no respect for Hashem. They came to Betra Knesset, they spoke, they walked, they talked, they ate. But as far as they did, it's not like this. They come to Betra Knesset, it's quiet, they don't talk, they don't schmuss, they don't walk around, hey, 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 hey. that's what it is. The Holocaust came, 
because they disrespect. Now I'm the little guy tell you that's what happened 90 years ago in Europe. The Holocaust was in Europe, never which not Iraq, not Egypt, not Syria, not Libya, no, no, Morocco, nothing. I happen the same thing what he writes. And Europe was no respect for Shah. No respect. Clara Babadi or Trabadi said, Oh, you know better. But I'm telling you, that's what the Sotyomta writes. I just think with my humbleness, in Europe was I, I have information most things in Europe. Not that I, I think I was was not sure. I had people told me what happened in Europe before the Holocaust. You're born to the respect. We don't respect, it's not a punishment. It is no reason for a Jew to be around. That's all. Well, nothing. No. You got a passport to be here because the Hashem expects you to do the respect. You don't give respect. All of a sudden you died. This happened, this happened, this happened. You died because one day you didn't give respect. That's enough. Forget about the sin. Maybe Chachamim tried to apply it to tell you the sin only shows he got no respect for Hashem. Because if you had respect, you wouldn't dare do such a thing. The Gemara says Hashem comes in the morning, but the people are not there. And Hashem is upset. Is, Where is he? Where is the guy? He went to a wedding last night. So what? He came home late. Why happened? Why happened? Well, he didn't know. He had the mitzvah. He had the option. The Gemara says Hashem is upset at me. Hashem needs you to, to be in the Knesset. Hashem cares about the Knesset. The man says, Hashem told me, Cheskel, come to the valley. Cheskel writes in the, in, the, in, the, in the Navi. I came to the valley, Hashem was there already. There's a respect. Hashem doesn't want you to wait. Hashem told me, Cheskel, come to the valley. By every way, I and Hashem is there waiting for me. Why Hashem is waiting for me? Why? Because of the respect. So you should know, the sin of, of the golden calf is not a golden calf. It's disrespect. Hey, comes Hashem to Moshe, tells Moshe, Pashat HaShavua, he called it Ruma, let's see how much you want to respect me. How much donation you want to give? Eighteen dollars you want to change? Are you going to give all your gold that you have, and all the silver, all the copper, and all the things that you have, and you run and you bring it? In three days, the, 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 the Torah will describe us that how much, um, uh, how fast, and how much we brought, and Moshe will say, enough, we brought enough, and the Torah is going to repeat Pashat Vayakir Kudai again the whole thing. To tell you, we're trying to get back to the stage that we have respect for Hashem. The whole trick of the golden calf was fiction. What the Satan did was wrong. But Hashem said, I want him to do it because I want to see if you can have respect for me. Forget about the sin. The sin is one thing. But to say, this is the one who took me out of Egypt, it means this. That's the secret of, of this expulsion. That's the secret of Purim Now it comes. To put Mordechai on the horse, I'm going to ask Mordechai, what do you do now with the children? He says, I teach them Omer. Omer? Oh, I'm going to say, Omer. Omer warned me. What do you mean? See, the Gezerah of Haman was because disrespect of Hashem. He went to the party. Eh, he didn't behave in the party. That's not the issue. No. He came to the party because disrespect to Hashem. Because on the, on the table were dishes of Bet Amikdash. Hashverosh and his wife, the witch, wore the clothing of the Kohen Agadol. You, Jewish people, went to a party and you watched it. You sat down and people gave you to drink in vessels of Betam English. It's not the same. After the Goyim took it, the Kedushah vaporizes. That's the Allah. There's no Kedushah in that. But respect. How do you see that? That's what Shimon Echai told his children. And that's what Leonavi told the Avon Sokin Yaakov and said, forget about it. Did you want the party? That's what they did. Sit down over there in the party and enjoy the drinks, kosher drinks, in the, in, in the cups of the time of the They saw this, Achashverosh, where's the clothing of the Kodak Adol, he didn't walk outside? I mean, disrespect to Hashem. He lost the visa. It's not punishment. I said, what happened? Well, the rest of the world, the Talmud, the Chadetz, the Rasha, they bow down to the Statue of Liberty. Is it sin? No. It was not with Azara. But it's called disrespect to Hashem. For this you lose everything. And it's Talmud to Mordechai. Omer? You teach them Omer? You know what Omer is? Omer means respect Hashem. This is the day after Pesach, have let us say bring Omer. What do you mean Omer? It means the Moshe didn't come because he don't respect Hashem. Says the Rambam in his commentary, listen, you come to Betra Knesset, 
as if certain things would not let the tefillah to go up. Omer lifnei hamakom. He said, how do you dress? How do you dress? The Gemara says, Tanaim Amoraim used to wear big day Shabbat to come to the Teknesset during the week to pray to Hashem. So you come with what? With shorts? With sandals? With a t-shirt? Or with a torn talit? And the tefillin from the uh, time of your great-grandfather? You never check them? The way they look so old? Every few weeks you buy a new suit, a new tie? There's respect for Hashem? He says, Omer, I kept the tefillah. Mom says, you, not only it feel like it doesn't go, you said all the brachot for nothing. You get a scene, you get a scene. You say, you disrespect Hashem. You stood up with him, but the you just broke at Hashem. You can't have the Knesset late. Why are you late? You never were late to the office. How come you came late? He said, okay, this is my mom. the high, Hashem has done with the Siddur. Start from Odeani, don't miss a letter, Ali says. You can't jump one, two, three, Ali, Nusha, Bech, go to the top. What is it? What is it? Where's the respect of Hashem? And if something doesn't go, something goes wrong, what did they do, what did they do? Nothing, you didn't do nothing. You have no right to exist. That's the Gemara says. In every difficulty that we have in our life, part of it, percentage of it, is the golden cap. I should never forgive us. What happened? He did sugar. He did the sugar on the wrong thing. Hashem sees. How much you respect Hashem? How much the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you walk. The way you sit down and you eat at the table, you see how you say, Baruch Atah Hashem, the Kavanah, the Tefillah, the Kavanah, the Brachot. Ariel says he reached the level to be Ariel because he said the Brachot the Kavanah, Shakol Nibit Baro, Merit the Kavanah, word by word the Kavanah. Because you say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Baruch Atah Hashem, it's not the same, just disrespect. Small stands. But I mean, that's the whole thing is respect. Hashem, Kol Machotol Olam Ba'edim. But I mean, that's the thing, you say, Amen. Every time you hear about the Tamil Gash, it says, Baruch Shem, Kvod Malchut Olam Ba'edim. The main thing is Kavod. The angels, the angels had six wings. And every wing used to sing one day. And the first day on Sunday, you say, Baruch. Second day, Monday, with another wing, say, Shem. Tuesday, Kvod. Malchut Olam Ba'edim. It says, Bet Tamil Gash. Let's say, Bet Tamil Gash. The whole idea of the Amigdash is Kavod. As Omer, uh huh. Omer Bet Amigdash, uh huh. So, in it, they have to pass up in Gomer. So, what did he She didn't come last night. This now is Pesach. They are said, How come where's Mashiach? What happened? In Kavod Lashem. You have to walk. Walk in Shabbat Nech Mudor, give Kavod Lashem, give Mashiach tomorrow morning. Amen. 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 Amen.